final. This is where everything started for recording music to be played out for the people to enjoy in the old days. Sadly, in the modern world, we don't often get to see vinyl being appreciated for what it is, thanks to modern technology. For the last few years, we found ourselves in nostalgia, and saw a sudden rise in vinyl sales all over the world. So, how come Hong Kong is not following the trend? In this documentary, I'll be discussing the history, pros and cons, and the reasons why it is so popular nowadays. This is a return to vinyl. Vinyl has been present in our lives for quite some time, around 80 years to be exact. For those who don't know what vinyl is, let us take a trip to the past in order to understand the influence vinyl has on the world, including Hong Kong. Well, as a young kid,、uh, you know, probably when I was just like two, three years old, and I would see a lot of vinyl records like,、uh, everywhere in my home. Basically,、uh, my father he grew up、uh, listening to a lot of like music with the you know, vinyl records, and then he used to travel to overseas like Japan, and he bought a lot of like a classic old recording vinyl record with like a beautiful jackets. And I, actually, I grew up like that, and、um, to me, you know, music, the way people listen to music. Is you know from the vinyl record, record player, something like that. I would have been very young.、Um, it would have been sometime in the eighties, and my family had vinyl. My dad、uh, was really into music, and he had a huge vinyl collection. So as soon as I was allowed to touch them, because obviously they're easily to break, especially if you've got.、Mm-hmm. Children's hands, but as soon as I was allowed to use the machine and equipment, I was、uh, straight into it, and I probably would have been about I don't know、uh, eight or nine, I think, when I could listen to his music, and he listened to a lot of you know the old kind of Rykuda,、um, Creedence Clearwater, a lot of bluegrass stuff,、uh, a lot of seventies sort of.、Um, Uh, disco, some rock. He was really into rock as well. So that was kind of my introduction, not only to, to vinyl but also to music of his generation. So it was pretty cool. At that time, I was, I guess, I was only like nine or ten. It was 1966, 67 at that time, and we, we did not have much、uh, entertainment. We did not go to the movies much, you know, because we were not so rich, and we did not have much toys. And the big boys and the girls, they were like、uh, playing.、Um, Beatles, Beatles、uh, bootleg vinyls on those、uh, portable players, and、uh, those were like、um, bootlegs from Taiwan or from、uh, or or maybe local Vietnamese press bootlegs that were like a car with a car vinyl or something like that, and it was so interesting because I could see they were listening to Beatles songs, Elvis songs, or just、uh, maybe cha cha music or instrumental or go go music and all that. And these big boys and girls in the sixties, they were like、uh, always dancing to those music, and I was quite impressed by those、uh, color vinyls, those bootlegs, th- those low quality vinyls. They were sh- very、uh, shiny and they were like、uh, colorful, and they were turning around and around. They were playing like very、uh, interesting akogo music, cha cha music, and I was like, I was like、um, shocked and like that. And they were dancing and. We're having fun, and I was also at that time. I was only nine or ten, and I was also dancing to those music too. Its origin in history started back in the 1930s, where the company RCA Victor introduced the first commercial vinyl record. And in 1939, Columbia Records adapted the RCA's vinyl record design, with the intention of vinyl records being less expensive but more reliable. At the time, Hong Kong was a busy city. Under the ruling of the British, with the influence of the Western culture, for 30 plus years, from the 1930s to 60s, vinyl was the dominant music format. In the 1960s, everything changed. The eight-track, an early version of the cassette, was created. Due to the eight-track's compact size, vinyl was eventually outdated. Since it set aside for a new trend of music format, the cassette tape. Which was created in 1963, all the way to 1979. Part of why vinyl sort of went out of fashion was because it became more convenient to have 
mini discs or CDs and then streaming, so digital files. But I think once the convenience of music being contained in these other forms kind of ended, you know, or well, didn't end, but that we sort of reached the highest form of convenience, we have music that comes through the air streaming. It's pretty convenient. Well, yeah, or well, yes and no, you know. Uh, Hong Kong is a very small place, but I think, you know, uh, for example, J Japan, like Tokyo, Tokyo City is also, um, you know, space is a very expensive item for the city life. Yeah. Okay. But, well, if you think that listening to music, you know, final recording, Final records as your one of your favorite hobbies. Um, I think you will always people can always find some way, you know, to to have some space for their own interests. To me, they're still very new and strange because um, when they came along in the eighties, I can. I could see that they were so small. Uh, people liked them because it's, they were so handy, and they did not have uh, like a, they they did not have uh, crackles. They don't have crackles and all that, and uh, and because vinyl records, you have to always clean them, and they are bulky and all that. But you know, if if you like something, you you won't care. You won't care about this. And um, when the CD or the DVD, the the digital format, they came along, I did not get to like them. They it, they were new to me. It, it's it's not my lifestyle because I'm always living in the seventies. I stick to the lifestyle in the seventies. Even in eighties, I I was still seventies. Even now, I'm still seventies. The other music device that is essential in the eighties is the Walkman, being the first portable device to carry around for cassette tapes. The compact disc was released by Philips in the early nineteen eighties as a nod to the cassette tape and its success. It was the first of its kind that used laser technology to read the data, with a much longer playtime equivalent to that of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, but nothing compared to the MP3 format, which entered its trial in 1987 by the Fraunhofer Institute until the format had patented in 1996. And the piracy problem is always a problem. Well, especially you know during the in the digital age, um, but you know before like I say, vinyl record. After vinyl record, they have uh, CD. Actually, before uh, like during the nineties, Hong Kong has lots of high-rated CD shops everywhere on the street as well. Like they sell like an illegal copy of the CD. Luckily, I still haven't seen any. High rated illegal copy of vinyl records. But um, yeah, this piracy issue is always a problem. But I think nowadays it's getting a lot more better, especially for the, for the digital content as well. But for any movement, with its cons comes its pros. In 2010, vinyl sales spiked and suddenly. Vinyl was popular again. In 2012, sales of vinyl grew more than 50% to hit over a million copies, the highest since 1996, and still rising exponentially. Not only that, but cassette tapes' soft powers are also shrinking. Why is that? I think what happened then were two things. Firstly, a nostalgic yearning for the past, which is what vinyl is. It's, it, it reminds people of my age, it reminds us of growing up. People of the next generation, like me, it reminds them of, of their sort of youth having vinyl. So it's got a lot of nostalgic value. But then the second reason why uh, might be because of the quality. Uh, I mean, you can get really nice quality on CD and uh, mini disc stuff, it will great as well. Uh, and streaming digital files, you can actually get really good quality, but nothing actually quite gets the quality and that. It's, it's a very unique sound that comes from vinyl, you know, complete with the cracking and popping of the needle on the, on the edge. And so, yeah, nostalgia and quality, I think, are the two reasons behind that. I think um, nowadays we have more choices to 
access to the music, to enjoy the music. As I said, when I was a young kid, probably the only way to listen to music is, you know, through the vinyl record or listening to the cassette tape. Um, but nowadays, besides cassette tape, vinyl records, we also have, you know, MP3, cell phone, iPod, stuff. So, vinyl record is just one of the choices and I'll say that you know besides all those digital contents like the mp3, wave file, YouTube, have a touch with the actual vinyl jacket and you know open it listening first of all you get a chance to hold it in your hand this is an experience. It's an extension of the music itself. It's not just about the you know listening for your oral pleasure. It's also you also got the visual experience as well. Um yeah it's a good thing, it's a good thing because um the truth is the truth. You know people now know the truth you know and and they come back to vinyl is a good thing. You know they come for good sound, natural sound, and and they the most important is they come they they have come into a very good lifestyle, yeah. And out there many people start to sell vinyl, and um, there's a lot of competition in prices for the good ones, you know, and and you know, and uh, a lot of people are buying like the players again, you know at. In the 90s, I persuade people to buy players, they won't listen. But now people, they come to for players. And if they are a player, that means, you know, the vinyl, they, they, they will start to play vinyl. So it's, in fact, it's good news. But I hope this can continue. And I, I think that, you know, in the, in the near future, it's like uh, not any media can, uh, you know, can, um, can replace the vinyl uh, in, in in terms of good sound, you know, so this can, yeah. Say you don't know me, I recognize my face. 